this video is for all the people that seem to be having some problems with getting their CNC machines to move. Um, I've gotten several comments from many of the videos stating that we bought the machine, we've plugged it in, we cannot get it to move. I've responded several to several of these people saying make sure you have the R&R Motion plugin in your plugins folder and I will go through that particular part of it in just a second. But the other thing we need to make sure of as well is we need to make sure that none of the limit switches or emergency stops have been triggered. So by this I mean there are several limit switches on your machine as well as a large red emergency stop button on the controller. If that emergency stop has been pressed, you will not be able to move the machine. Matter of fact, I don't even think it'll come on. I think that cuts power to everything. But if the limit switches have been, have been tripped, you will also not be able to move your machine. So we're going to go over where some of these limit switches are, how you can test them, and just to make sure that you do actually have the system in a state where it is able to be moved. So I'm going to get to that in a second. I'll be back and we'll, I'll show you where those switches are on your machines. Okay, so this is my machine. It is a little messy. It's a little dirty in my shop right now. And as you can see, I've just gotten done cutting out some stuff. But I wanted to show you the easiest limit switch for you to get at. And that is a switch that is right inside here. Right here. And I'm going to shed a little light on that for you so you can kind of see what it is. But it's a limit switch and it's actually tacked to a little piece of uh, angle aluminum and uh, it's probably the easiest one to get to and it's the easiest one that if you need to test whether your limit switches are working or not that you can trip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my finger in there and I'm going to trip it because I know my machine is not moving of course and uh, my spindle is not spinning. But what I do want to show you before I do that is that Mach 3 is not in any type of a warning condition. It is set, it is green, it is ready to go. But as I reach in here and I trip this switch you will see that now Mach 3 is now in an error state and if you see at the bottom it says limit switch triggered. That is the easiest switch to get to to make sure that there is some type of communication taking place between your machine, your controller, and your computer. These machines come with four limit switches on them. There's one right inside there. There's another one right down there. There are two on the bottom as well, one on the far side, as you can see right over there, and one down here on the near side, right there. Oh, it's not very easy for you to see those, but if any of those switches are tripped, the system will stop. It will basically indicate that it's reached its limits, and it will not the machine let the machine travel any further. Okay, so as we can see, my Mach 3 installation is basically telling me that my machine is in an error state, my limit switch is triggered. Now I can easily reset that. If I move my machine actually to trigger that, it will not let me undo it until I clear that error state. My control box has a green switch on it that lets me override my limit switches. So, for example, if this gantry moved all the way to the end and triggered the limit switch, I would actually have to physically turn the stepper motor and release that switch in order before I could clear this, clear this error within Mach 3. This switch lets me override that and it lets me move the gantry backwards automatically or by, uh, by using Mach 3 and not having to do it with my hand. It's just, a, it's just a bonus. I think this is a great addition to the control box. If you have one, awesome. If you don't, sorry. Um, I know there's several different versions of this machine out there, but this is a great addition to this box. Okay. This part of the video is to show you how your software should be set up very quickly. I'm not going to go through a complete Mach 3 installation. 
or a configuration, but I'm just going to show you where some things are in relationship to the program files. So what we're going to do first is let's make sure that we have the things uh, where they need to be. And those are located on the C drive in the Mach 3 folder, in the plugins folder beneath that. And you'll see that I have the r, &R motion DLL minus from 521 2021. It's 267 kilobytes. And if we look at the properties of this file, we're going to see that this is r, &R motion control Mach 3 plugin file version 3.4.0.0. Copyright 2010 to 2014. So it is a little old, which makes sense as to why it is for Mach 3 and not Mach 4, but that needs to be there. And if we go into our Mach 3 setup and we take a look, of course, this is the little screen layout that I like that you guys probably have seen before, but we're going to go up here to our plug in control menu item and we're going to see that we have an r, &R motion plugin if we click on that we'll see that we have version 3.50 of the controller i have a serial number i have a firmware i have some pulse frequency i have some pull off things like that i, I don't touch any of this stuff this actually comes pre-configured in the card and uh is nothing that i would want to touch but this is the part that if you don't have the r, &R motion controller plugin in the plugins folder you will not see this menu item if you have it in there and you do not have it connected you will not see this you will get a communications error if you have it plugged in and you still don't see this and you have a communications error i would tend to believe that you maybe do not have an r, &R motion controller in your uh in your control box hope that helps a little bit